sites and uh, kind of the basics that go into it and what you need to do to get started and just some ideas along the way. Um, the presentation uh, is geared towards physical products mostly, but I am going to mention, um, I saw that there were some um, consultants that joined that do varying, various things, so they might need to know about selling content and digital items. Uh, so I, I will mention that uh, along the way. So that'll be partly what I can do. Um, let's see. All right. And I just got a message that the audio was dropping off. Um, sorry about that. Zoom's definitely been uh, getting probably 10, 100 times more usage than they're used to getting. So if I do drop off, I apologize for that uh, a little bit. Um, all right. So I'm just going to have to go and assume you're hearing what I'm saying because I can't keep stopping to, to check. So we're going to start going uh, through the presentation. Um, the next slide is just the goals and overview. Um, you know, obviously, um, e-commerce is always valuable, especially now since um, you know the stores are closed. Uh, online sales are up 52% year over year, and since the outbreak has started, the online uh, sales have increased uh, for e-commerce by 8.8 percent and um that's definitely they're saying now that that's going to continue even after the outbreak's done people's buying habits are going to change somewhat as a result of this whole ordeal and um they'll start buying things online that they didn't think to even order online so it's going to be important to uh, establish an e-commerce uh, presence now and in the future so that's kind of why e-commerce um we're going to get into a little bit about um preparing to build your site, some of the things that you need to know how to do. Um, just get my face off of here. You guys can't see that. Um, the main things to know are considering who your target market is, um, partly because you're, if you are a local business and you're used to servicing people um, that are all local to you, it might be a little bit different because you are with a website, technically you're able to market to the world. Um, so you start to think about how much, how, how many of the, how many people like your ideal customers that are. All right, everyone, we're back on. Sorry about that. I think the Zoom, um, Zoom disconnected. Just going to share my screen again. But we were talking about target markets and um, what do they look like? Um, what are their key problems on your existing website? You might not even cover a lot of this information in terms of. Um, who you are and what makes you unique and why they should buy your products. So when you're advertising to a, a new market, which might be beyond where you are locally, it's even more important to build that into your website and all the information that's throughout. Um, how do they want to be served? You know, what do they, what do they value? There's all these different things that are, that need to be considered before you even start building the e-commerce site. Cause if you don't consider all these things going into it, you're going to end up adding in just all the products, basically making a, a, an online catalog for your store which will help get some sales maybe from your um, most loyal favorite customers, but aren't necessarily going to get you a lot of sales from a people that haven't done business with you or B people that, you know, we're only coming to you for, um, for the convenience of it. Um, one thing that you can do to get a better gauge of um, what people are Googling related to your services and your products is do some uh, keyword research. Um, this slide is showing the Google Ads Keyword Planner tool. And by using this tool, you can type in some variations of the products that you offer and get an idea for how many monthly searches there are either in your region or in the country um, around your product. And that can give you a better idea of like, well, you know, four people a month are Googling this product, but, you know, a couple thousand are Googling another. Maybe that's, that's going to give you um, an idea of which product you have more likelihood of getting some success selling. And then also, you might even learn that what you call your product is, is a little different than what people are actually Googling. So it'll give you some, a little bit of a heads up of how you can word things on your, um, on your website and your products so that the name of your products are lining up with what consumers are searching and what they want to buy. So that's just a little note on um, keyword research uh, in terms of how it can be used to get found and how it can be used to make your website easier to use and to navigate. Right. Now, just one thing that um, some business owners and people don't really think of is like, 
maybe this is more obvious now, maybe it's just in your basement, but just having a clear um, idea of where you're going to store your inventory and how you want to manage um, inventory levels. I suppose now more than ever, um, inventory levels may be a variable. Maybe, maybe you have what's on hand and it's hard to get more. So that's uh, definitely important to consider um, when you're setting up an e-commerce site. Typically by default, it's going to set up your site so that it's... Um, you pretty much have like unlimited inventory and maybe that is the case, but um, definitely something to think of ahead of time and then where you're going to um, store everything and how you're just going to manage processing the orders. Cause if you are going to start doing some online sales, you might establish a relationship or a setup with um, your shipping provider to come pick up your, your orders uh, from your location. So just getting that uh, squared away ahead of time is important. And it's something that some business owners uh, we'll, we'll wait until the last minute to start considering and trying to figure out how they're going to handle that. Um, online pricing is also important for, to, to consider. Um, you might have an idea for like your local market and what you can sell an item and what the profit margin is. Or even if you're in uh, a retail shop, um, maybe you have a little bit of um, cost built in to cover your overhead. But once you start selling online, it definitely becomes a game of, of um, doing some evaluation and seeing what you can realistically price out items online and then doing a, a regroup and saying and determining, well, maybe this product isn't going to be profitably profitable for me to sell online. Uh, maybe we, can, we should um, consider others, but mainly just trying to be within the ranges, uh, especially considering if you're not going to be offering, we'll talk a little more about shipping, but it, uh, especially factoring in if you're going to be charging for shipping versus something like Amazon, which, um, you know, typically you don't have to pay for shipping. Uh, those are just some notes about, you know, looking at how very various price price things range. Um, this is always one of the trickiest things to talk to um, our, our clients about is uh, picking the right shipping service. Um, it's more important for some platforms because typically you have to pick one and then pay pay for it uh to connect to your website and others you can kind of just pick one of any one of them and, and be perfectly fine but definitely um trying to pick one that's uh you're comfortable with maybe you've done business with before and um maybe even one that you can get some negotiated um rates with um most of the tool most of the um, services that you sign up with can connect with your website to enable live calculations. So as people are adding items to your cart it'll give an accurate uh, quote and they can pick if they want it ground or if they want it next day air depending on the um the the offerings you want to have for um shipping so that's those are just some good notes when you're kind of thinking about you know what how are you going to offer shipping and or maybe you figure out you could build some of the, the shipping costs into a flat rate or you could um, even offer free shipping if it's something that is um small enough and easier to ship or you just have enough markup built into the product so you can offer it for free um, some some clients also offer free shipping on orders over you know x amount of dollars. All right, so the next one. Um, also, just something to consider that can really have a big impact on the bottom line. Obviously, is um, packaging. Um, one of our clients is shipping meats, and um, the shipping materials alone are kind of expensive. So definitely need to get that completely squared away and figured out before you're sh shipping out the items and making sure that your costs are covered. Um, also as part of shipping, it's a great opportunity to include some um, promotional materials with your shipping and coupons off your next order. So that's also kind of falls into shipping and packaging when you're thinking of what, what do you need to actually ship out your items, making the most out of getting those orders and hopefully getting reorders um, from there. And then also um, shipping restrictions. Um, this is more so related to perishables. So I just wanted to include this slide because we have done uh, websites for a, a couple of different um, places that ship perishable items and food. And if, if you are doing that, then typically you would want to use FedEx um, PeriShip. Uh, they specialize in shipping items that need to be you know, refrigerated a certain temp and uh, moved a certain way and handled a certain way. So that's just a, a little note about um, shipping restrictions. Um, I don't have ex direct experience with it, but I'm sure it also would apply to, um, you know, also would apply to places that are shipping any kind of item that's sensitive or hazardous, potentially hazardous or some, or anything like that. So definitely thinking ahead of that and talking to the, the reps, the shipping companies that you want to work with and making sure that your setup and your account is, uh, is all set. Um, one other note that, that we've run into with shipping lately is also just getting negotiated pricing if you're shipping large items uh, via freight. Um, 
there are surprisingly some easy integrations for websites for shipping freight. So that's something that you can also um, look into if it's anything that, you know, one of our clients is selling paddle boards online and um, you can't just ship that standard that has to go uh, via freight, which is a higher cost. Um, so it's just something that's good to think about before you get halfway through your project and realize that, you know, it's going to have a huge impact on shipping prices and costs. Another thing that is just on a checklist of things to get out of the way in the beginning um, would be your terms and conditions, um, starting with the privacy policy, um, building that into the site. It is you know, required that you include a privacy policy um, on your site and um, you need to give information about what kinds of information you're collecting, cookie policies, um, different notes about data, um, there's a lot of templates available online to, to do it pretty, quid, pretty quickly and easily. Um, if you can't hire a lawyer, which is always the, be the best route, but um, plenty of clients do try to do it on their own. But um, ideally, you would hire a lawyer to help you with that and make sure that it fits your company and everything you're doing um, properly. Uh, the next thing is a return policy. So the return policy can really be whatever you want it to be. You just need to have one. Um, and it needs to be very clear and detailed about what your return policy is. Um, are there returns, returns available? Is there a deadline for when somebody can return something? What, what are any other conditions that they need to know about? And uh, how, of course, you can make a return. Um, this is very important. I've seen funds um, get withheld because there was no return policy on the site. So if you're making sales online and your credit card company that you're working with finds out you don't have a return policy, um, they, could shut, they could either shut you off or, or basically hold on to your, your money um, until you get that policy on because they're paranoid that you know if somebody needs to return something, they're kind of stuck in the middle because they have the money and they, they shouldn't be uh, giving it out. All right, so kind of getting more into the fun part of um, steps to setting up a, a web, a, your e-commerce site. And this is a little bit depends on if you already have a site or not. Um, but on the next slide, if you don't have a website already, you're going to need, need a, don a domain name, a URL to where um, users are going to go to find your store. If you have a website already, ideally, you would want to use the same domain name that is on your primary store because that already has the um, search engine ranking and um, some authority and people are going to it. Um, if your site does not have a SSL already, encrypting the connection, you will need that for uh, the new site if you're using a, a tool to add um, the, pay, the online store to your site. Um, and you, you need to make sure your hosting package supports e-commerce. Um, just making sure, because if you're on a Wix or a Squarespace, or um, something like that, you might have to upgrade your hosting plan uh, to include e-commerce. Or if you're on WordPress and you're adding WooCommerce or one of those tools, which we're gonna talk more, definitely a lot more about in a little bit here, uh, you wanna make sure you're on the right uh, hosting plan that can support that. Uh, typically though, if you have a WordPress site and you're just adding a tool onto it, you're not really, you should be, your existing plan should handle it just fine. Um, in most cases, it does make sense to hire a web developer or um, just some kind of consultant that can help you through the process to make sure that you don't miss any of the steps. But otherwise, um, these are just the basic list of some of the things that you need to consider. Um, in terms of the, do the domain name, in terms of purchasing that, even if you're not gonna use them, I just recommend GoDaddy. I think they're great for domain name registration, make it really easy. And then from there, you can choose to either use them for your hosting or use a third party separate from GoDaddy, but it's definitely a great place to keep your uh, domain name registration. All right, um, one other step to get uh, started on early on in the process, and this, is, this also kind of depends on your payment, um, your platform that you're going to use, but if you're gonna use um, um, something that's, you're going through your site directly, you're gonna need to set up an online um, payment processing account. Um, typically, authorized.net is, uh, is easily integrated in with um, most websites that are available. And um, you, can, you can sign up with authorized.net and connect the API uh, pretty easily, just making sure that everything is um, secured. I would recommend going through um, a uh, broker. They, tip <clears throat> they do get better, they can get you a better rate from authorized.net than going to them directly. So if you know if anybody needs uh, information for somebody like that, I do have somebody I recommend um, to all my clients who can get um, 
better rates than going to them directly. So I always, that's definitely always a better, better way to go if you can save some money. Um, now getting into the recommended platforms, um, the two that we recommend are WooCommerce, which is a WordPress add-on and Shopify. And we're gonna get a little bit into the pros and cons of each from what we've seen. Uh, I've used WooCommerce for years and uh, works really well. Um, and over the last year, I've also been using Shopify a lot, which is um, extremely, I'm very impressed with. It's definitely more out of the box catered towards um, physical products, um, but I'm very, very impressed with it. So we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about those. Um, firstly, let's talk a little bit about WooCommerce. Um, it's definitely very customizable. If you hire a web developer, there's tons of, um, tons of add-ons uh, that are available. Every one costs like $90. So, um, you know, you definitely need to be wary about that. But even if you're doing a lot of crazy different things, you're typically not getting more than two or three different add-ons to combine with the site. Um, there's a lot of good themes available for WordPress to make it look nice. Um, you can sell a lot of different product types. WooCommerce, I've been very impressed with um, the ability to sell digital downloads. If you're gonna sell, um, some kind of like downloadable or something like that. WooCommerce is out of the box set up to do that really well. Uh, the security is, is decent. Um, the security I should say is really good. Um, it, there are frequent updates and patches that come out for security. Um, the only problem is you're as the owner of the website responsible for, the, for maintaining the security versus a Shopify, Squarespace, Wix, one of these other ones, they're kind of like as part of your subscription managing managing those security patches and updates for you. Um, there is a large community of um, support out there. So anything you Google related to support items, you can usually figure it out with WooCommerce. Um, but then again, you are relying on just, you know, a, a large community of probably 10 different answers. And sometimes you'll try three or four of them before you find the right one. So WooCommerce can be a little more time consuming uh, to figure out on your own, uh, to get it to work the way you want to keep it secure and um, you definitely, it's not the easiest to do it yourself. Like if you're gonna do it yourself, I, I don't think WooCommerce is typically the easiest thing to do. The big thing about WooCommerce though is most small business websites are already built with WordPress. So if you have a site and your primary goal is just to add uh, e-commerce as an add-on within your website, the Woo it's a pretty inexpensive way to add, add e-commerce to your site using WooCommerce as opposed to, um, as opposed to um, another, having a whole nother platform that you're like linking off to. Um, I'll just give you an example. I wanna show you a little example of what I mean by this. Um, let's see here. All right, I have to share, change how I'm sharing my screen so I can show you this example. Screen two, I have to exit out of the presentation for a minute. That's what I'm gonna do. All right, so you should be seeing my screen now. Um, this is an example of a website here. We did the website for Woodman's of Essex. So this, they're obviously a restaurant, that's their primary purpose. But if you click shop online, um, you can see they have a robust online store. They actually ship live lobsters. So this is that example I had mentioned before of a site that um, does more than just, um, that, that does perishable shipping. So, but you can see this is a WordPress site with an add-on of WooCommerce. So that's kind of the reason why it's nice to have a site. Whereas this one we're doing now, this is a, um, they're selling online meat online. But you can see the primary purpose of this site is direct consumer sales. So that is an important thing to note is you really need to, um, it's really geared for just online sales. So it's as opposed to just being an add-on piece of the website. All right, so I'm gonna stop my share for a second and get the presentation back on. Um, spending a lot of time on the platforms just because that's definitely something I feel strongly about. See, and we should be back on the presentation now. Now moving on to um, Shopify. I've uh, been very happy. I think you know, Shopify works really well with, um, works really well for physical products. 
There's a lot of nice features built into it in terms of um, shipping uh, order notifications. There's a lot of like easy payment gateways. So like if you use something like Shopify, you don't have to go and find a, you don't even really have to go and find a, a credit card processing broker to, to set you up with a credit card account. You can, like, you can use Shopify payments, which are built into it. And then there's a ton of other native um, payment options like um, PayPal, Amazon Pay. Um, I think Apple Pay is even easy to add on. So the easier you can make the checkout process for your customers, the better. And that's partly what I really like about Shopify is it's very seamless um, to add an item to your cart and get immediately to the checkout and you're paying before you even, you know, practically realize you're paying. So that's been something I've been very happy with, um, with Shopify. I just feel like the whole checkout experience is very smooth and seamless. And there is a, a way that you can add an embedded collection of items from Shopify into an existing website. So if you have a WordPress site and you don't want to use WooCommerce and you want to use Shopify, there is a, a way to do that. And, and uh, we have done it before. Um, there aren't as many, it is, Shopify is a little more expensive. Um, typically, you're going to end up paying for the base fee for Shopify, which is um, $29 a month. There is a light version for $9 a month if you're going to embed it into an existing website, but they kind of, they may, it's hard to get a lot of the extra features that you might want, and then you'll have to end up upgrading anyway. So you're typically looking at $29 a month, plus um, on top of the $29 a month, you're typically looking at a few apps. That's what WordPress has plugins, Shopify has apps, and whereas with WordPress, a lot of the plugins you just pay for once and then you renew it once a year and it's, they're pretty cheap. Um, there's also a lot of free ones with uh, Shopify. A lot of them are anywhere between 10 to, 10 to $20 a month. So before you know it, you're paying an extra, you know, 20 to $40 a month on top of your base fee of $29. If you have a successful e-commerce store, which should be the goal and what you're trying to do, that should be nominal and not really something to worry about, but it is something to consider if it's only going to be a small piece of uh, your overall um, business. Um, and then one of the cons, like even a basic example is like three variations for each product by default, there is an app to add on more. Uh, but then that app is $10 just for the sheer ability to be add more variations. Meaning if you had a, um, like one of our clients is, uh, sells popcorn and, um, you can buy a package and pick like six different flavors, but with like the out of the box version of Shopify, you can only do three flavors. So then you have to pay for an app, just to add three more. So just a little example of how things can add up when, when you're using Shopify, some, and something that's kind of pieced out, um, but does work really well and is, you know, very secure. Um, one note that I had about right, for the people that were on here and might be interested in selling, um, virtual, uh, training courses, um, maybe kind of consultants that are looking to do things, um, have some kind of virtual training program through their site. Uh, the, the tool that I would recommend you can, there are some things you can do with WooCommerce to do that. But then there's also um, Learn Dash is like a learning management system for WordPress, which I, I highly recommend. So I wasn't originally, it's not even in the presentation, but I saw that consultants had joined. So that, that would be the tool I'd recommend looking into if you want to sell your courses and then WooCommerce would handle the e-commerce side of that process. All right, getting started with the platform, pretty much regardless of the direction you go, um, if you're starting from scratch, you're gonna have to pick a theme. If you're using WooCommerce and you already have an existing WordPress site, you're gonna be able to, um, you're gonna be able to add it to your existing theme and not have to worry about it. You probably have to customize a few things to make it look right. But um, there are free or paid themes to choose from. Um, I typically find that the paid themes for WordPress are significantly better than the free themes. For Shopify, the free themes are actually pretty nice and you can probably, if you're gonna do it yourself, uh, get by just fine using a free theme. Or you can do a custom or a mix of custom and, and paid where you get a theme and have a developer um, customize the look of it. Um, the product page is very important. You're gonna have to um, make your products names and descriptions very relevant to what they, the person might have been searching out. Um, and then the photography is just so important. If you have, if you have an e-commerce website with poor photography, um, you're going to have a huge, huge drop in conversions of sales and uh, li much less success. So I highly recommend using strong photography, either custom that you're having somebody come in and take, or hopefully stock that doesn't look like it's stock photography um, and needs to actually represent the item that you're going to be sending out. 
Um, and also just when you're picking your products, just making sure that you have the, um, all the right information and reviews if available or any um, stamps or accreditations that go with your product. Um, other pages in terms of WooCommerce, so you at least obviously you need a home page which serves as a directory for your whole site, gives a quick um, background. Uh, if you're in a smaller company, you definitely want to have your story and your why really prominent. You know, why should I purchase this product versus the 50 other that came up when I Googled for this item? And then a contact, having an availability for contact for answering questions or concerns or anything like that is important on an e-commerce site. So it's a little less text heavy than a typical website that has a lot of like service related content um, on an e-commerce. All right. Um, just one other note about the products is also um, when you're prioritizing what products you're going to sell, um, just doing a little bit of research and figure it really thinking about what products and services do you offer that are unique and you can't just get on Amazon choice for a nominal fee. So really prioritizing the unique products that um, people need to come to you for. That's just another little sidebar to, to think about. And once the website's done, obviously you need to generate sales. This is where a lot of people fall flat. Uh, they build the website, they go through the arduous, pro somewhat arduous can be process of building the site, and then that's it. Then they, it's out there and they say, well, where are the orders? Um, and you're very rarely going to just throw a website up and start getting orders. Um, now might be a time when you could get a few trickling in, uh, nothing that's going to really move the bar. So we're just going to talk about some of the basic things of uh, generating sales. Um, obviously having a good SEO strategy. Um, we mentioned it earlier about the keyword research and naming products, names, um, getting those in the titles of, the, of your products and into the descriptions. Um, also getting reviews on your products after you've set them up is going to be important. Use, uh, using Google Analytics to track your traffic is important. Um, Google Shopping, if you ever Google something, you notice little shopping links, that's important. Um, Shopify has a nice little built-in thing for Google Shopping, so that's nice. And then having a search on your site can also help with um, indexing. Um, friends and family, obviously sharing it with everyone and hopefully they spread the word, getting some word of mouth marketing. Email marketing, hopefully you have an existing customer uh, email list that you can blast this all out to. Um, referrals, um, getting into Facebook groups and posting there. Facebook ads and Instagram ads are very, um, very good for a quick, um, if you have a product that's gonna appeal and you can really define your audience, they work really well. And also running contests and giveaways to drive traffic to your online store and build your email list is um, very helpful. All right, so that concludes the presentation. Now I'll just go through um, any chats that have come in and try to answer maybe something that I went too fast over or didn't even cover at all. Um, let's see, here's the chats. So, and this is an opportunity if you want to chat in any, any extra questions you can uh, through the Zoom app. Um, one person asked, what are the differences between terms and conditions and privacy policy? And um, real, realistically, you could combine the two if you're a smaller site and you don't really, you know, you could just have the return policy as part of your um, terms and conditions, but I do think that um, having it separately called out in a link, people are probably more apt to look for a term policy than they are just always the terms and conditions. So that's just one little example of maybe a reason to, to do that. All right, so that's, um, looks like all the other questions are more related to audio. Oh, here's another one. Okay, so one, one person asked for the name of the um, training app. So I actually did have the screenshot, or I have that website up. So I'm going to stop sharing my presentation now so I can share that, that link. I don't know if I'm still sharing my screen. It doesn't give me the little green thing when, when it's recorded. All right, so you should be able to see my screen now. This is the Learn Dash Learning Management System. We've set up several of these sites for consultants and um, it works. It's awesome. <laughs> it also uh, syncs up with some of the different um, um, CRMs that are out there. Like we've had to set it up to be tied in with an Infusionsoft and that works really well. 
and you can see some of the um, some of the features of the learning management system here. Uh, courses uh, monetized. There's also like quizzes and stuff built into it, which is cool. Advanced quizzing forums. So if you want your clients to like talk to each other, you can drip feed content. So if you don't want to give everything, if you want somebody to buy your online class, but you don't want to give it all away in one shot, so they can just like cancel it after a month, you can drip it out over time. Uh, badges. So yeah, just to give you an idea, it's a pretty cool, pretty cool program. Um, I'll just leave my screen on this and look at the back of the chat again. Yeah. Um, product, how many products can you load on Shopify versus WooCommerce? Um, there isn't really a um, limitation for either. So you can add, um, I think if you're adding like hundreds of products to a site, I'd rather have a Shopify site though. I think it would, I think if you were, if you had a really large e-commerce site in WooCommerce, I think it could end up getting clunky and, and slow, low, a little bit slower low than if it was on a Shopify platform. So if I had to choose between the two and you had that many products on a, a website, I think it, the um, sure, Shopify site would handle that better and it would be a better end product. So while I'll, um, if, while I'm looking here for, at some different, questions that might continue coming in. I'll just show a couple examples of e-commerce sites since we still have um, some people on. So this is a WooCommerce site that we did. This company, they send out, they're mainly a retail, but they ship coffee all over the, all over the country. And you can kind of see it's a nice, you yeah. know, you can get a nice e-commerce site with WooCommerce. And um, if I go here to coffee, you can kind of see how the, the listings look. You have all the you know sub subcategories on the left, and then another example I want to show is um, a WordPress site with Shopify added into it. So this is if I go to order online, you can see how it has a pretty nice embed. Um, so you can see all the products that they have available. And if I, you can see, I added the Easter line here. And if you click view product, it stays on the WordPress site and has this nice little pop-up. And if you click add to cart, you know, you can add items to the cart. And um, we already looked at this quickly, but this is just an example of e-commerce site we're nearly finished with. And just how you can see the value of professional photography, you know, it's pretty hard to make me cook like this look decent. And then, you know, if you hire the right person, it can, it can look great. All right, so if there aren't any more questions, I think we'll conclude this. Um, oh, there's one, one more question. Check out in the cart features that work and don't work. Um, I guess I can just show the, an example of um, the cart process between Shopify and WooCommerce. So this is a WooCommerce site. So per, you have to pick, you know, you pick your option, add to the cart. Go to this cart page. check out and then you kind of get this long form. This is how WooCommerce more so works with the payment information on it. Um, whereas with Shopify, go to the item you want. Everything's the same up until that point, but let me show you with the cart product. I'll click add to cart, check out. And this is a more standard Shopify checkout form, which people are accustomed to using. And um, it's remembering my information, but it, it does remove all of the styling and backgrounds and other things that could distract you from checking out and finishing your purchase. And it does break the cart process into information, shipping and payment. So it's actually the website, whereas WooCommerce, everything's on one page. Um, Shopify breaks it into three steps. So they're actually collecting your information and making you put in less at a time, which is gonna help you get through the, the purchase process more likely. And then if you do get to payment and don't pay, Shopify has a built-in um, built feature 
that allows you that does cart abandonment. So it's one of, you would get one of those emails that's like, Hey, you've, you know, Hey, you forgot to check out, come back and finish your order. And that's something that's out of the box with um, Shopify, which is not out of the box with um, WooCommerce. All right. So one person asks, uh, what is the cost of having a developer set up a simple site? Um, that's a, a big variation. Like if it was um, typically for um, a basic e-commerce site, it's something that can be done hourly on Shopify. And it can be something that if it's on an accelerated timeline can be done in a week or two weeks or a month, depending on availability of information. Like this was, this was a site that we built that's a really basic online Shopify site. And, um, you know, I think that this didn't take more than 10 or 15 hours to put together um, all in all. And there's a lot of products on it, but we trained the client on how to add all those items herself, which saved significantly on the cost to set it up um, because we had her basically set up. She went and got professional photos and then we had her um, put all her products into a spreadsheet like this category, subcategory, name, price, and it made the whole process very quick and easy to, to get the site done and finished. All right, I think I showed all my examples. So we'll give it another minute for any other follow-up questions that everybody might have. And then I'm going to, I'll end this. And if anybody needs help with setting up an e-commerce website, that is something that we really enjoy doing. And, um, you know, now's the time to, to do it. Then I'll send out the slides with notes and presentation from today to everyone uh, as well. Um, the recording will just take a while to upload. And then um, I'll, I should be able to put it on YouTube and send it out. One person asks for hourly rate. Um, typically ranges between, depending on the work that's being done, technical or design or a mix of the two, typically ranges between 100 and 125 um, for the site. No problem. Yeah, I hope this was useful information. We'll be doing more webinars coming up soon. I'll probably send out a, um, I think the next one, I'm going to be having a, a business go a business coach host the webinar. I'm going to host her so I don't have to do all the talking next time. I think that'll be next Thursday. Um, it'll be a business coach about uh, doing a presentation on getting through the next couple months and setting up for uh, success for the rest of the year as well. Thanks to all that came and they're leaving nice feedback. <laughs> and I see um, D is on here. Thanks for sending out the link. We had about, uh, I think we had eight signups from your organization. So that was very nice to, <laughs> very nice to see. All right, so we'll get on that and um, I'll send that out and my information will be in my email. So if there are follow-up questions or if anybody wants to set up a, a, a call, we can do that as well. All right. Thanks, everyone.